Welcome back to Houston Life. Today we are honoring International Women's Day. Houston, of course, is home to countless titans and powerhouses. And whether as a pilot of the SpaceX Crew Dragon spacecraft Endeavor or as a mission specialist aboard STS-125, astronaut Megan MacArthur has been often one of the few women in a field historically dominated by men. But she is working to help create a more diverse group of space explorers. This morning at Space Center Houston, she told me some of her hopes to see more young people people, especially young women, pursuing their passions. Megan, this is the perfect International Women's Day interview. I'm so excited to meet you. You're an engineer, you're a scientist, you're an oceanographer, you are an astronaut. <laughs> the uniform kind of gives it away. Uh, what does it mean for you to, to be part of history? So many firsts in your life and career. Thank you. It's such a privilege to get to be a part of space exploration um, in any facet and to represent women in this way is, is a tremendous privilege and I'm just lucky every day that I get to be here. You are, you have a new title. You are uh, Space Center Houston's first chief science officer. That's right. Tell us what this role means. What will you be doing in this job? Sure. Well, so in my new mission here as the chief science officer at Space Center Houston, I help support the authenticity of the programming that's offered here. So we do space exploration learning. We do science learning. We do educational programming for children, but also for the general public. So I get to be a part of that and just helping bring people in space closer together. We want everyone from all backgrounds, all ages to engage with science, technology, engineering, and math. And, and this is a fun place to do it. Well, it's a perfect role for you. Megan, you've spent 200 days, more than 200 days in space. You've done two missions to space, including the last shuttle mission to the Hubble Space Telescope. That's right. Uh, and I could see the smile on your face. Those are pretty incredible accomplishments. When you were a young person and you were thinking about your life, the future that was ahead of you, did you ever consider that that would be part of your credit list? You know, when I was a really little girl, my dad was a Navy pilot, so when I was a really little girl, like a lot of children, I said, I want to be just like my dad, I want to be a pilot like my dad. And I didn't really realize at that time that there weren't a lot of women military pilots. Um, as I grew up, we grew up on military bases around the world, and so I would see, I was around aviation and airplanes all the time. Um, and then at, when I was uh, about 14 years old, we lived on a military base that shared a space with a NASA training center. And so I would see astronauts come in their T-38 jets and their spiffy blue outfit, and they would get out to come and train. And, and I thought, that's a real job that real people do. How do I get that job? That looks like fun. And so I knew that being an astronaut would be a super long shot, but I knew that I wanted to be a part of it. And so that's what led me to study engineering and you know all the, all the steps along the way. So um, it's, it's hard to believe that I'm really here, but, um, but the path can get you there. And a PhD along the way as yes. well, right? <laughs> yes, we have to point that out as well. You have an eight-year-old son, Theo. Yes. And you were telling me before this interview that he was, you know, playing with a space toy and kind of narrating the path of that. What's it like for you as a parent to see you have truly left your imprint on on your son? And what are your your hopes for his future? Well, I love that he is interested in rockets and in airplanes. He likes really anything that goes, any piece of machinery he's interested in. And like any kid, you know, his interests jump from one thing to another. And my hope for him is really just that he finds that thing that he's passionate about and, and finds a path that is exciting and interesting to him. And I don't need him to be an astronaut. I just need him to find the thing that makes him happy. Well, that's incredible. That's very well said because I know a lot of parents put the pressure Right. On, on kids to say, yeah. no, you will be this or you should do that. But yeah. that's not your philosophy. Well, I think it's hard even, you know, at 17 years old when I decided I'm going to be an aerospace engineer, I didn't really know what that meant. So I think it's hard that we put a lot of pressure on teenagers um, and young people to figure out exactly what they want to do. And I think the, the, the reality is there's a path out there. And as you meet different challenges and opportunities, you're, you're making those decision points. And if you follow the thing that you love to do, you're going to end up in a good place. That's great advice. I still don't know what I want to do with my life, <laughs> just pointing that out. Uh, Space Center Houston, one of the magical things about this place is not only is it visual and interesting and fun and cool and all of the things, but as people come through here, they are learning every step of the way. That's part of the magic here, right? Absolutely. This is the reality of space exploration, right? So people, I'm a science fiction fan, right? People watch the movies, they watch TV series, and they're excited and interested in, in space exploration. And they come here and they see the reality of it, right? It really is exciting and interesting, the real things that are happening right now in space. When you encounter young people around Space Center Houston, I'm sure you have gotten all kinds of questions 
missions, being an astronaut, I mean, young people are fascinated with astronauts, right? Um, specifically for young girls who maybe, you know, you are, you are one of the top role models, right? And you said growing up that you didn't see a lot of women right. in space or in this field. What's your message to young people? I think young people in general, um, it's so important that they follow that passion and even if they don't see someone who looks exactly like them doing the thing that they want to do, stay curious about it, find out more about it, tell people what your dream is because people want to help you get there. That was true for me along my path when I decided I wanted to be an engineer. My parents weren't engineers and so they found a friend who was an engineer who could help me figure out what that path looked like. So if you're quiet about it and you keep it to yourself, it's going to be harder to get there. Well, Dr. Megan MacArthur, scientist, engineer, oceanographer, and astronaut, it it was a pleasure meeting you, and this is the perfect day for us to mark and celebrate International Women's Day. Thank you so much. She was incredible. I could have chatted with her all day. And speaking of bringing people and space closer together, if you are looking for things to do during spring break, the annual Moon to Mars Festival starts this Friday and runs through Sunday, March 19th at Space Center Houston. Look how beautiful that is. Yeah. It's a super cool event for the whole family with looks at cutting edge space tech, immersive experiences, and even appearances by some astronauts. Yeah, and Derek, there's four days of live concerts from Rick Springfield, Sister Hazel, a Selena cover band, Biddy Biddy Banda, and tickets start at $44.95 and it's $39.95 for ages 4 to 11. It's free for kiddos 3 and under. Just head over to our website right now, Houston life.tv for more information.